Senna. Pals. We are two dudes watching Legends of the Fall. That's what's happening right now. <laughs> so, because Michael and I finished our assignments, and then I, I turned to my sister, I'm like, so what are we watching next? And she's listed off a bunch of stuff, and I'm like, two dudes watching Legends of the Fall sounds hilarious. <laughs> We've so, been left to our own devices. So that's what, that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> In the interest of full transparency, I, re I, I saw like a sliver of this as a kid, not the whole thing, just like, I know something that happens late in the film, mm. like one aspect of it, it relating to a young girl. Okay. That's all I remember from this movie. All I right. don't know like the first or second act or the end of it. Like I don't remember most of the film. Just a thing that kind of like made me twitch as a kid. Like that's what happens. Hmm. So you'll see it. <laughs> you'll know. But anyway, let's jump into this. Thanks so much for hanging with us. Here we go. Oh wow. Some people hear their own Beautiful. inner voices with great clearness. And they live by what they hear. I can honestly say I've never seen a movie start that way, like just coming out from behind a tree like that on a dolly. Such people become crazy. They become legend. It was a terrible winter. His mother almost died bringing him into this world. His father, the colonel, brought him to me. I taught him the great joy of the kill. When the hunter cuts oh. out its warm heart and holds it in his hands, setting its spirit free. I could go for some venison right now. This is an experience so far removed from me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have not ever hunted in my life. I had had sons too, but they were gone now. I went fishing Forever. once. I didn't catch anything. Very bad <laughs> so. That's pretty par for the course, honestly. The colonel had tried to help the people, but it was no use. I wonder how far removed this is from Silence of the Lambs. Yeah. He wanted to lose the madness over the mountains, he said, and begin again. That looks so beautiful. Gorgeous shots. And so we lived for many years, and the boys grew Time strong. before iPads. Yep. That's how I always look at that. Back in the good old days you know? where men were men, and women were women, and horses were horses. <laughs> Samuel was the youngest. There was nothing these brothers would not do for him. That does not look like the optimal hiking clothing. No. It was the moon of the red grass when Isabel Ludlow, their mother, went away for the winter. She said the winters were too cruel for her. Hmm. She was afraid of the bears. She was a strange woman <laughs> in a <laughs> Bears just want hugs. If not friend, why friend shaped? That spring, though, she did not return. Oh, man. Alfred wrote her many letters, but Tristan refused to speak of her. His world was here with me. Every warrior hopes a good death will find him. Oh. But Tristan couldn't wait. Such a fascinating mindset. We gonna poke a bear? Okay, I know I was making jokes about bears wanting hugs, but bears don't want hugs. I saw that Leonardo DiCaprio movie. Uh, Revenant. Yeah, right. Oh my goodness gracious. God. Oh god. That's not gonna stop bleeding. You better get help. Oh my god! Well that bear's done. Oh man. I kind of feel bad for that bear. I know, me too. Like Tristan was the one starting stuff. Like you poked it. Yeah. Can you breathe? Yes. Take your hand away. Come on, take it away. I thought it hit his arm for some reason. I thought reason. it hit his arm too, yeah. You stupid half brain jackass. Did you know that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Older brother's like, this idiot got a bear claw. I still can't help but feel bad for the bear. Yeah, right? Like, that bear didn't do anything. April the 13th, 1913. Dear Isabel, I am not fool enough to try to reorder a life already lived, but I fear I have not done well raising our sons alone in this wild place. Hmm. Dear William, I'm not coming you back. You take too much responsibility <laughs> on yourself as well. Right. It's really nice here. There's toilets. <laughs> as for Samuel, I have big news. At a Harvard tea. Oh, is this going to be one of those things where she comes out with like the city boy thinking. brother, and then she falls in love with the like woodsy Brad Pitt brother? Hello, hello. Hello, father. How are you? Good to see you, boy. Good to see you. Hello. You might be onto something. Hello. Mr. Cannon. Oh. Uh oh. Yeah, it's an honor. 
<laughs> Where's Tristan? Ah, uh, he's off somewhere. You know him. Well, you'll be here tonight to welcome his brother home, or I don't know the reason why. Yo, yeah, <laughs> like, you gotta like play it cool, yeah. my guy. That's your brother's fiance. Take a picture; it'll last longer. I feel the loss of her parents has given her a certain fragility, and at times I think she feels very alone in the world. That's what makes her vulnerable and more optimal for pursuit. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's fucked up. Can you speak English? Stab. Speak English. <laughs> He wouldn't lower himself to speak English, would you, Stab? Oh, uh, what? Hey, there's Tristan. Here he comes. Straight out of like a romance novel. Yeah, he's got the shirt open and everything. Don't they feed you up there? <laughs> I like eggs. <laughs> oh, you never saw Snatch? Oh, God. Missed me, did you? <laughs> Still on no Still drunk. I didn't realize that Anthony Hopkins and Brad Pitt worked together before. Yeah, me neither. There it is. Does he speak English? Does he speak <laughs> English? Because I saw Micho Black. <laughs> God sake. They were in that together. <laughs> Thanks for the bath, bud. I hope you and Ugly here find every happiness together. Momo Tomo Shemail. Angelica Susanna. Oh, she loves him. She's not swayed by the handsome other brothers. No, but we got a lot of movie left. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. You must be Isabel too. How old are you? 13. When I was 13, I was sent away to boarding school. I hated it. It's a good thing she's here on this farm. <laughs> There's no century where boarding school is good. <laughs> it's always awful. Yeah. You're going to marry Samuel. That's right, I am. I'm going to marry Tristan. Oh. Oh, it's the Kaiser. He won't lift a finger to stop them from annihilating Serbia. Let's not talk about war at the table, please. Oh. Well, Susanna hears that all England's mobilizing. Well? Well, we're stuck out here in the middle of nowhere while all this is going on. Okay, one of these brothers is going to end up in the war and get killed. I'm imagining it's going to be him. With respect. I was about to ask, where are the women? Uh, would you like to let go some... Uh... <laughs> all of them? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they would all bump their heads trying to open the carriage for yeah, her. Right? And now so he's gonna die. A girl is fed That's your prediction? Uh, yeah. He's too interested in Europe not. Dear Isabel, how strange to have a cultivated woman in the house again, and how intoxicating. Indeed, to have all three of my sons under my roof again. I can imagine. Mm -hmm. Family reunions. Yeah. Now he's interested. He's just observing. Let's not project. <laughs> it's Brad Pitt. There's no way he's not the romantic lead. It's a friend of yours. <laughs> Black Beauty. Wild Stallion. I got a dollar that says he brings her back. Fun fact, I have not fired a real gun yet in my life. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I'd like to go to a range, but no one will take me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That happens too often. Yeah, unfortunately. Achara has a story just like that. Oh, no. She almost killed somebody. Oh, God. <laughs> I know far too many stories of people who have misfired into themselves or places they shouldn't. Oh, he's trying to break her in. Ah, yep. Why am I turned on by this? <laughs> he's so rugged and handsome and doesn't care about the war in Europe at all. He broke it in. Look at that. Yeah, he did it. Been working all night on that. Nice work. You guys look like a bunch of ice cream cones. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I'm going to try to remember that, though. She's got me spinning. <laughs> she's got these tell. ideas and theories, and she's... Uh, a very intelligent woman. She's sort of passionate. She words. Good Lord, Tristan. You brought it up. Well, of course she is. Are you? <laughs> mm. Yes, I am. You gonna wait till you get married? Susanna thinks that... The, the, no, the... I'm not gonna wait. And you're afraid you won't meet her expectation. So you're asking me for help. You are good at everything you try to do. I'm sure it'll be the same with... Just some really. That's some that's some brotherly support right there. I wasn't expecting that line at no, all. No, I wasn't either. <laughs> I'm planning to be with her. I recommend. Mm. You're impossible. You brought it up. We're 
looking for a man we heard might be in this uh, part of the country. Uh, name of Tom Cullen. I have a likeness here. Uh. Yeah, I recognize him. You got him, James. This fellow passed by here uh, maybe four, maybe five years ago. Did some work here. Wow. Uh. He's hoping to book a passage on a boat to Australia. Australia? Or was it Hong Kong? I can't remember. <laughs> it's like a wild goose yeah. chase. What exactly is he wanted for, sir? Well, he, uh... That would be oh. of a private nature, sir. Private nature? It's a public office you hold there, sir, isn't it? That's a good point. Gentlemen. <laughs> they were like, so close, but no dice. Yep. And spread hood of now the big black cobra. What is the problem? I'll read another story, you know, Samuel. <laughs> I the Germans broke through story. at Armand Tears. Oh... Uh... And this paper is already a week old. Calm down. Father, with my fluent German, I could become an officer. Yes, and lead other young boys to the slaughter and be slaughtered yourself. Yeah. This is a turning point in the history of the world. H how can How can we... we what? Father, you can't expect us not to be part of this. You taught us. I taught you to think for yourself. Oh, That's it can't what I taught be you. two sons that go. No. Well, we've already lost two of our cousins at the mine. And we've never even met. And don't talk at me, boys, if I've never seen a war. This is such a classic, yeah, like setup. I'm going to Canada to enlist. Wow. Called it. I knew it. I'm yep. going with him. And he did not ask his fiance. Both Two of them. Of, oh, jeez. This is going to be like saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Damn. I meant to speak to you about it tonight. I know you'll understand. It, it's the only honorable thing to do. <laughs> to hell with your honor. Samuel won't change his mind. Change it for him. It's a pretty tall order. Yeah, you, you know what? You do have a lot of power. Yeah, they agreed. You, you could leverage that power. <laughs> Father says she never liked it here. I think they loved mostly the idea of each other. Hmm, that's astute. <laughs> Please don't let him go. <laughs> what can I do that you haven't already done? Oh, God. Uh-oh. Okay. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Whoa, we're creeping a little close there. Oh god. At least wait until your brother's off to war. Yeah, he's not even dead yet. This is like, come on, the body's not even cold yet. <laughs> like, we haven't gotten there. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's so wrong that it's good. <laughs> <laughs> In your moment of need. Like, sure, your older brother was, like, mooning over her, but... He's like, damn, beat me to it. <laughs> Nothing happened. She's still a virgin. It's okay. Ah, uh, Isabel. I have tried to shelter our sons from all the madness, and now... If I'm not mistaken, uh, Charles repeatedly told me that her grandfather fought in World War I and never talked about it. Wow. Because he was like, the only thing he would say is, it was an ugly war. Yeah, you better say sorry or something. Oh, dang, it's a wrap. He didn't even leave yet. There's already, like, goo-goo eyes between her and Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. Like, damn. Like, he might be on the horse, and they're already in the back. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on. If I was Anthony Hopkins, I would probably be breaking down. The Kaiser's helmet. No, it's like, knowing what he's so seen. That pleased me more. Like, and knowing what his sons are going off to do. Yeah, right? You take care of Simon. I will. This really is like... <laughs> he's sending Tristan to make sure the other two get home. Yeah. He's like, you're the only one that's gonna hack it out there. Long four years, boys. I didn't see that comment that Brad Pitt would be going to. I know, me neither. School might be awkward for her. No, 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 I teach her myself. May I help? Uh-huh. Yeah. Was he the one on the wanted thing? I don't know. She's a half-breed, Colonel. Not in this house, she's not a half-breed. Tristan calls me a half-breed. <laughs> and I love it! He says I'm half gopher and half hawk. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> After her chores, then. Yeah. As a half-breed, I approve of this joke. <laughs> Y'all are about to see some shit. Yeah. We've all seen 1918. 1917. 1917. Yep. I was this close. God. <laughs> I've seen the movie. I, I was swear. I was almost cool. <laughs> Tristan, get back to your unit. Oh, this boy's a boy. I'd rather have you watching my back. Shit. All right, here we go. Oh, what? Okay. Interesting. Game on. Yeah, right. February 3rd, 1915. Dear Susanna, the horror of this place is indescribable. Yeah, no duh. Samuel! Gosh damn it! Are you hit? It's just a scratch! 
it. Well, that scratch probably saved his life. Yeah, All probably. these guys are just getting massacred. Mm -hmm. Let me up, Joe! Let me up! Oh, that was some rough ADR, by the way. <laughs> Is this the part where Wonder Woman comes in? Yeah, right? <laughs> Susanna. I try to guard against despair, but there are moments when it seems that all human decency is broken down. Yeah. Don't let father worry. Is he? Oh, shit. I know that God's mercy will protect me. Is he intercepting the letters? I don't know. Oh, boy, that's a good one. You know, put that away. I hope he gets to keep his leg. Yeah, me too. Mackenzie was just brought in. His legs turned bad. He said... He said what? Go on, man. What is it? He said your brother, he volunteered to take his place and oh. go over on the reconnaissance. Oh. Oh. No! oh, my God. What are you guys doing out here? No way. Oh, right next whoa. to you. Dude, like, how, how many signs do you need that, like, you're just... Yeah. <laughs> you're not supposed to be here. But he wants to prove himself gloriously in battle. Oh, is he turning around? It seemed like it turned back. Oh, shit. Ow. Taking on the whole German army. Oh, oh not jammed. a jam. Smart, grabbing the gas mask just in case. Oh, God, oh. get up, get up. Go, 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 go. Samuel! Oh. Oh, this is so messed up. Okay, he's out of the smoke. I don't know if that means anything. Samuel! Samuel! Like, exposure Samuel! time. I mean, like, yeah. Just inhaling can do some serious damage. Oh. Oh, that barbed wire shit. God. Oh, no. Stop moving. Oh, this is messed up. For one dude, they set up this machine gun. Oh. What a way to go. Yeah, right? What a fucking way to go. Oh my god. First you're gassed, then mm -hmm. you're pinned in this barbed wire, and then you're shot. And you're still not dead. He's still not gone. What a way. This is like torture. This is so shitty. Samuel! Oh, God. Uh... Oh, no! Oh, no! Ah! Fuck. Gotta get his body back. Oh. <sighs> mm. What is that? My only thinking of why he's doing it is so you can put one of the dog tags in him, so that way he's identified. Oh, shit. Oh, I took his, oh, took but his no, heart. he just took his heart, so I'm wrong. This must be like some native thing that I don't understand. Oh. Oh, he's full on native mode, I guess. Yep. Okay. Knives are quieter. Oh, oh he's scalping he's just them. Scalping them. Yeah. It was all his prep work for Inglorious Bastards. Yeah, exactly. Rides back in with scalps in hand. I guess this fulfills that legend part of the title. Yep. Tristan? Oh, he's not okay. I feel like Tristan's the only one who should have gone to war. <laughs> he was the only one Anthony Hopkins had any faith in. I am being discharged from the army, but I cannot come home yet. As for our beloved Samuel, all I can send home is his heart. Alfred will bring it back. You know the place he should be buried, up in the box canyon where he used to draw the birds. Your son, Tristan. And just like that, before you're even married, you're a widow. What you saw that night before Samuel left? Oh, don't. No, no, I want to. It is Samuel I loved. Okay. Tristan will be back someday. 
Your father will be pleased. What a very weighted conversation. You know how much I love Samuel. And I think you know... <laughs> He's just got st like a weirdly creepy way of looking at her. <laughs> I That's how we all look. I wanted to say it in this place. <laughs> I think you know that... I'm in love with you. Oh, that's not the look <laughs> the you want. The smile immediately goes away. We can make a life together. A uh -oh. happy life. I don't think so. Yikes. Walk away, walk away. Undo, undo. Control, delete. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Sounds like you're not sure, though. Maybe, maybe there's a chance. <laughs> Unfortunately, she's been put in the weird societal position where she can't really say no, but, like, wants to. The Prodigal Son Returns. Oh, I think that actress was in Echo. I was just looking at her and like yeah. she looks familiar and I can't remember why. Yeah, I think she's she's been in a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. He's like, sitting here like, well, there goes all my chances. Damn. He's got to kill Tristan. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> there can only be one. Yeah. How did, how did we know she was going to be there? Oh, he's sensitive. He can cry. I couldn't save. Of course you couldn't. <laughs> I kind of like the <laughs> parallel it draws to when he was first leaving and she's like, help him. Mm -hmm. And she's the one crying on his shoulder. Oh. Oh. <laughs> the other brother had no chance. No chance. <laughs> Zero chance. Have a nice ride today. I was like, why did you open your mouth? Excuse me, Father. <laughs> Man knows how to empty a room. Tristan, please. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We're uh, accelerating. Okay. The heart wants what the heart wants. Uh, advancing to the next stage. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> advancing to mm -hmm. the next stage. Yeah. Welcome to level three. <laughs> You will marry her. Make an honest woman of her? Yes! And you tell me about Samuel. We all love Samuel. Samuel is dead. What? How convenient that is for you. What? Because you love her, I will forgive you for that. Once. You say that again and we are not brothers. Wow. Damn. I do wish you both all the best. I'm glad that they're not making him just like straight up black and white awful. Like that's he, true. He's trying from his perspective to just like, you know, he's wrestling with this. There's a lot of feelings at play. Yeah. Because even in his approach, he was like trying to go about it gentle. He's just he came off as creepy, but he was trying to go he was about trying it to gently. Be, he was trying to be respectful yeah. in a way that Tristan just like isn't. Yeah, he's got his values and his code and whatever, whatever. Already, I seem to have acquired a reputation for honesty and fair dealing. And I am pleased to call some of Helena's most influential citizens oh God. my friends. When was the Black Day? That was in the 20s. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the Windows 97. <laughs> that's and right. Windows XP background. That's right. <laughs> oh, no, it's stuck, just like his brother. Uh -huh. He's gonna have a flashback. Yep, stuck in the barbed wire. <laughs> Don't have a flashback. That was loaded. Like his. Mm -hmm. That's heavy. We have a boy. Aww. I'd like to call him Samuel. And if it's a girl, he is. He's a <laughs> back in the psalm. Lots of couple calves up near Camus Canyon. Might be a grizzly. My grizzly. White grizzly. Oh, he said white. I thought he said my grizzly. I was like, that bear's or, still or alive? Maybe he, maybe he did say my grizzly. <laughs> With the hand? They have a kinship. So you tell me that's a real bear? Yeah, that's a real bear. The old ones say, when a man and an animal have spilled each other's blood, they become one. Hmm, interesting. I said four bears, Mr. Saxleven. And I said no Indians. Oh, you racist bitch. Mr. Saxleven and I are about to reach an understanding, isn't that right? Just give him a goddamn beer! Tristan, stay out of it! I said stay out of it! Handle it respectfully. Get back! 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's a venerated elder of the Cree Nation and has counted coup on hundreds of his enemies. He is our friend. He's thirsty. <laughs> Get him a beer. <sighs> Not the way to handle it. I know they're all disappointed in him, but I wish I was that cool. <laughs> I know, right? Like, a part of me is like, damn, that was so cool. I think it was the bear's voice. He heard deep inside him, rowling low of dark, secret places. Well, if anyone should understand him, it's his dad. Yeah. Oh, that was an interesting shot. POV of the ho horse freaking out. I, I'm not 100% certain. Oh, oh my God. God. Wow. Oh my goodness gracious. That's one of those like potential come to Jesus moments where it's like, oh man, maybe I need to get my head straight. Like maybe I'm not okay. <laughs> like, that's the appropriate. She's like, the fuck was that? Yeah. No, <laughs> agreed. <laughs> like, that's an appropriate reaction. How long have you begun? Not long. A few months. I'm just glad that she didn't hug him right away. Yeah, right? Or if I were pregnant, would you still be going? That's a good question. Yes. Oh, damn. Wow. I'll wait for you forever. The heart wants what it wants, I guess. Mm -hmm. Where's it going? Out there. Oh, way out there. April 20th, 1918, dear Tristan, it has been months now. They're like covering all the bases of like the romantic novel look. Do you still care to know what is happening here? Cattle prices continue to fall and winter seems never ending. Why don't you write? Oh, Are you never what? Coming back? Did it go back to her? Tell me. She just doesn't have any letters from him. His business has expanded to include financial concerns Do not in tell Chicago me. and Washington. Do not tell me that these two end up together. He wants us to send Isabel too to boarding school in Chicago, but she adamantly refuses to leave the ranch. Agreed. He's medicating? Yeah, he's self-medicating. He's gone into like full hot Jesus mode. Yeah, <laughs> really he has. Dear Susanna. I'm oh shit. Wonder. He's in the, like, poaching and ivory trade now. Marry another. Marry another. You don't mean that. No one looks this good when they're self-medicating all the time and probably drunk. No. <laughs> you see, these gentlemen and, uh, And a great many others, I might add, are urging me to run for office. Okay. <laughs> how's, how's Pops gonna feel about and, uh, this? What do you Sounds gentlemen hope to get out of this? Oh, good question. Colonel, the Congress... Congress is government, sir. And I worked for the government once. Father, the issues that <gasps> we... Indians! I can assure you, gentlemen, there is nothing quite so grotesque as the meeting of a child with a bullet. Wow. An entire village slaughtered while sleeping. <sighs> that was the government's resolution of that particular issue, and I have seen nothing in its behavior since then that would persuade me it has gained either wisdom Common sense or humanity. He's not wrong. He's chewing this scene up. He is. I will then consider it my absolute duty as my father's son to bring both wisdom and humanity to the United States Congress. I thank you for your blessing, Father. <laughs> Let's see how well that goes. Tristan's always been wild. You love him for that. Yeah, I suppose I do. I mean, the thing that drew you in is the thing that's going to break your heart. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> Offered. She's to be your brother's wife. Damn, eldest son just can't do anything right. Well, you might better remind him of that fact. He's not here to defend himself. No, he's not, but I see you are here to defend him and what is his, even though he's abandoned her. And I won't even speak of who else he abandoned. Daddy's whoa, whoa, wife. whoa. Don't you blame my son for Samuel's death? Samuel chose to be a soldier, and soldiers died. Sent to their slaughter by men in government. Parasites like you. Oh, oh my goodness. Damn and blast you. Damn you. Damn you too. You shut your mouth. You leave her out of this. Because like you, I love a woman who doesn't love me. He oh. used her, and he deserted her. Your darling Tristan. Oh, don't. Please. I loved her. 
This is so complicated. Uh, yeah, this is unpacking a lot of drama. He stole her from Samuel before the war. God, help me, I'll kill you. That's supposed to be a secret. That's mm -hmm. not not talking about it. Susanna, you deserve to be happy. He's not wrong. I mean, yes. About that. <laughs> he did say one thing right. I do appreciate the writing of his character, though, because I understand where he's coming from. Yeah. You know? Late that night, we found the colonel on the floor. Oh, no. Inside the cold fire. He could not move. Oh, damn. And as the years passed by, we would hear that someone had seen him on the ship going up some river no white man had gone up before. He was lost to us. That was all we knew. But every year, the moon of the falling leaves, I would dream that the bear's voice inside him had grown silent. Coming back? You coming back? Do you feel his presence? Or that's maybe that's something else. That's, that's something else. Yeah, that's a lot of horses. Stand! There he is! I love the just image of him on the back of a horse in a suit and tie. His hair gets just longer and longer every time he returns home. All right, all right, I won't shake my head, please. <laughs> I don't think I've ever grown it that long. Go through a shampoo bottle a day. Yeah, I was gonna say, that takes some work. He hit a stroke some years ago. Oh, oh no. He can't talk now. I hope you feel guilty. The fact that he's writing upside down. Oh, damn. This is heartbreaking. Oh. I used to work at Macaroni Grill. Writing upside down is not that hard. Huh, oh, fair enough. <laughs> you get used to it after a week. Father, this is for you. Oh my god. What has he been up to? Hunting in Africa, apparently. I know, but he's got a whole suit now. Yeah. Um, Alfred and Miss Susanna were married several years ago. Yeah. Did they say what year it is yet? Brother's a congressman. Um, no. Okay. I think the last date we got was a big new 18, place 19. over in Helena. 19, or 1918. Whoa. He's saying that your brother voted for the Volstead Act. Oh, did he? You suggesting I become a bootlegger? <laughs> Good money, bootlegger. You know what you do? <laughs> Screw them! <laughs> Screw, Screw the government! <laughs> Screw them! Dang, Anthony Hopkins. That's a nice house. That ship has sailed, man. But she said she'd wait for him forever. She can't help it. The heart wants what the heart wants. This is a, a trope of, like, romance movies, but it kind of makes me mad every time. It's, <laughs> it, it's selfish on his part. Like, he should not have shown up. Forever turned out to be too long, Tristan. Dang. Look at the sun on his hair. <laughs> Looks like an angel. Yeah. I don't want it. Okay. Is it really over? You told me that this was magic. That whoever wore it but she took it off. Okay. I want to make sure you're protected. Yes. Don't you want to see Alfred? <laughs> Not particularly, no. It's probably better that I don't. Yeah. That's your brother. Tell him hello and congratulations. She's going to tell him that and he's going to be like, what else did he say? What else did you do? <laughs> oh. Cute puppy. Oh, she's grown up. Mm -hmm. He likes you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a sneaking suspicion this might happen. Brought back. That look on his face the moment he saw her, he's like, uh -huh. oh, whoa, somebody grew up. Thank you, Tristan. Mm. Dang. Dang. Loaded thank you. Yeah. There was a lot in that thank you. <laughs> They're bootlegging. Time goes by. So then en ending up together is the only thing I knew about. Oh, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. That was gotcha. the only thing I remembered. I saw him. You mean to tell me okay, that he had the audacity to come here just to see you? No, he wanted to see you, but he thought you'd get upset. I'm not upset. <laughs> this is happy. I think he might be right. <laughs> oh. oh. I couldn't do, I couldn't marry her. What did he say? Like, 
I'd always be wondering, like, <sighs> if he came back. Well, not that, but, like, the comparison between brothers. It's just yeah. like, ah, it's yeah. Brody. Mary and Isabel, too. She's practically... Oh, no. She can't be more than what? 19? Bomb drop. You know what? I can't imagine what the hell is Decker thinking of to allow this. Um, perhaps he's thinking of his daughter's happiness. He really said, I know exactly what's going to, like, stab her in the heart. <laughs> June 2nd, 1921. Tristan. These characters all made their choices, so okay? <laughs> like, she knew he's a stallion who's Your like, father must be very you know, happy. yeah, Isabel been around, like a daughter to you. bound to fly off and on an adventure. And she was named after your own mother. And he knew that she was marrying someone who still was hung up on someone else. Doesn't it? Get the family wedding dress. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> It's happening. <laughs> they got the wedding venue there and everything. Okay. <gasps> what a cute baby. Samuel Decker, let alone. Alfred and I were delighted to hear of your son's birth. We had hoped for a child of our own, but of that I despair. Damn. I know Alfred thinks of you often. I look forward to the day when we all might see one another again. She is the consistent factor in both of those situations of not having a kid, yeah, so your son definitely. Has a proud and noble name. I know he will live up to it. Because sometimes it's the guy's fault. This time it's not. What a cutie. Please give my love to Isabel too, and to your father and everyone else. Yours always, Susanna. Mm -hmm. What is he going to stumble into? Yeah, right? Oh! Evening, gentlemen. Tristan? It's the G-men. As you know perfectly well, we handle the liquor around here. Now, you've been what we'd call a small-time operator. Mm -hmm. An amateur, frankly. But lately, your shipments have been getting a little fat. And my patience has been getting a little thin. So the next time you get in our way, it'll Got be it. the last time. Excuse me. Appreciate it. Like to see you try. Perhaps you're wondering why you're not dead already. Because your brother is Congressman Ludlow. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And that's all. They put him into Congress so he could vote out alcohol, so that way they could make a killing on bootlegging. Have the brothers even seen each other yet? I don't think so. Hey, Richard. How are you? Hey, sir. Hey, sir. She seems bored by all these mm -hmm. schmoozing politics I parties. I'm here for the glad handing. <gasps> here it comes. Hello, Alfred. Hello, sister. Oh, man, she's staring daggers at this woman. Who's this young man? It's Sam. Hello. <laughs> He's so cute. She's beautiful. Can I take her? So I can have a piece of Tristan. Yeah, oh, just, so. just, just one little bit of him. Samuel? Hello. Who is this lady? <laughs> Who is this lady? I'm your aunt, Susanna. I used to know your uncle Samuel, who died in the war. I think you look like him. That's what Grandpa says. <laughs> Aww. Grandpa says I can have Uncle Samuel's gun when I'm bigger. Would you come and see it? <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. I'd love to. Sometime. He's a fine boy, Tristan. He is. How's father? Is he well? As well as can be expected. I, um, I wish... Pardon the intrusion. I think we're ready for your speech. Brad Pitt constantly looks like he's just like in a shampoo commercial. Honestly, though, his hair is amazing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just give him a little like, wee! We'll meet again soon. Like that. Dang, I can't imagine being like that estranged from your brother that you just run into each other. By surprise at places. I wouldn't have accepted that handshake. I would have yeah, right? gone in for the hug. Uh oh. Uh oh. Kenneth. A word. Watch this. Go on, go and get Tyner. Oh no. 
Shit. Oh, it, it was too- it was just too happy. It was too good! Too good to be true! Uh, not the constables and the sheriff. Oy. My kid's in the car. We have information that you're transporting goods in violation of the Volstead Act. Well, if you mean a case of Irish whiskey from my father, I am. I have to ask you to give it up. You'd be a bit disappointed. <laughs> no way! No! <laughs> Bear's coming back. No! Surprised they let him get that far. I know, right? Hold him down! Let's get out of here, John. An envelope in his pocket. My brother told you to stay out of our way. Pick him up and put him in the car. Oh my god. All right. Here comes How? Tristan to burn it all down. How did she get shot? I think it ricocheted off the rocks. Oh. Would be my best bet. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. He just can't have nice things. No, he can't. <laughs> like, Despite his best efforts. Yeah. No, not another one up on the hill. Where do we go from here? Like, where's the rest of the movie going? I don't know. He's gonna be burying his dad next. I don't- I don't know if his dad can handle all this heartbreak. Right? Oh, you decided to come out? I don't wanna see him. I don't wanna see him! Just... I'm sorry, I'm so very sorry. You voted the thing into law that made this happen. Blames the government for Isabel's. Justin, there's something we have to talk about. The officer you beat, he almost died. He killed my wife! But they say you're gonna have to plead guilty. Serve 30 days. And the one who shot off his gun? He was, um... reprimanded. <laughs> Damn. Typical. You have to let it go, Tristan. It was a terrible, tragic accident. Tristan, listen to me. You let this go now. He's got that thousand yard stare again. Need a minute. <sighs> oh, gosh. He's not one to allow the feeling of powerlessness nope. to mm -mm. live. He's like, no, I'm going to take control. Yep. Like. I want my scalps. <laughs> yeah. I will exact my revenge. Thank you very much. Oh, he's doing oh, the Oh, never mind. Days. He's doing the 30 days. Well, for now. Yeah, yeah right. We'll see how this plays out. Surprise. It's a jailbreak movie. I'm so sorry. Are you, though? Are you? I gave a speech the other day. I didn't. Yes. <laughs> my first public engagement. It was... Um, it was on the resp It was on the responsibilities of women. It was good to see you. Uh, can't even finish the sentence. Oh, gosh. Like, he just buried her. Yeah. You could wait a second, lady. Oh, I guess the life expectancy back then wasn't as long, so <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Back in the good old days. But they really do come together in these moments of grief. I guess that's what ties them together. Yeah, I guess so. I still sometimes dream that I'm the mother of your children. <laughs> wow, that's an intense stare. I wanted her to die. <gasps> Or maybe I even wanted Samuel to die. Damn! Whoa! Why would you say that? You had nothing to do with Samuel's death. And you had nothing to do with Isabel's death. He's handling this very well. I was about to say, he's taking this really well. Go home. Mm. Go home to Alfred. Mm. Go home. 
I understand her. Yeah, I but, get like, it. But like, there are fleeting moments where I hate her. <laughs> <laughs> but like, like that's because she's she's really well written. So I mean, yeah, that's true. Like everybody's actions have been perfectly justifiable within their character. Where were you? Nowhere. But I, I just went out for a walk. I needed a walk. Don't turn him into a jerk. What are you doing, Ham? He's already the doctor rang, said you missed your appointment. Got the perfect balance of asshole and nice guy. Mm -hmm. I uh, I feel very tired. I'm going to go to bed. I thought this was gonna turn into an interrogation scene. I got scared for her. <laughs> I know. He's smart enough to let her go and then he'll get the information later. I think he knows better. Oh. For a half second I thought it was uh his brother looking at them. And he's out. And he'll be back. Just hands him the knife. He knows what's up. I he mean, does. like, yo, we yeah, got business to do. We got things to take care of. Uh-huh. Oh, they're all mounting up. The hell? Oh. Is everyone, is everyone's got the same idea? Oh, they're ambushing them. They're okay. ambushing them, yeah. All right. I feel like some characters that we like are going to die. Yeah, very concerned that that's what's going to happen. He's got his thermos. He's like, I'm out here for the long haul. Oh, jeez. It's like painfully beautiful. Yeah, right. And business as usual over there. Mm-hmm. About to go down. I love him just casually sitting up there smoking his pipe. Ho ho ho! Parkour, parkour. I was really expecting like a, you know, out in the wild ambush, but no. I guess this is the... Assassin's Creed, baby. Assassin's Creed. Out in the wild makes way more sense to me. Way more sense. Oh, all right, out in the wild. Maybe it's multi-fold. Is that a word? Maybe it's two-fold, you know? Like, oh. different attacks going yeah, on yeah, at the yeah. same time. Or, or at least being shown. Take out the entire uh, operation. All in one fell swoop. Wow. That was a shot. What drew him in there? Why did he... Why did he... Pop the tire. Is he here? Oh! That would hurt a lot. That would hurt. What are you doing? Hello. What are you doing? What are you doing? She's cutting off her hair. <laughs> yeah, why didn't you just do him in? I know, why did he hesitate? <laughs> oh my god, that's an X. All that glass. Oh, that's over. Oh, he's yeah, done. he's done. Pitchfork? Something, yeah. Somehow it didn't pierce. Breath. Pitchfork. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting there, going, "What have I done?" I mean, that haircutting thing is like you get one take. Oh Jesus! Oh my God! No, it's a lot more than a haircut. I suspected that's where that scene was going. <sighs> this should be called Heartbreak the Movie. Yeah, <laughs> like, right? it's just Honestly, though. Now we've started a war. You know what, Jim? You have won her. I am bringing her home. Oh. Yeah, right? Hell's getting mighty full. I found 
following all the rules. <laughs> Man's and gods. That was your first mistake. And you... You followed none of them. And they all loved you more. Samuel, father, in my own way. <laughs> Poor guy just cannot win. I'd like a moment alone with her, just... Seems to always be the way in movies. Yeah. Like, the, the one who's, like, trying his best to follow the, the rules gets screwed, and the wild one is the one who... Well... To be fair, he lost his wife. Yeah, so. right. I mean, like... <laughs> but you know what I mean. Uh, oh, the picture she took of them. That's what happened in Crouching Tiger. That's what happened in House of Flying Daggers. Yeah. That's Last of the Mohicans. Like, it's just always the way. You know, when Samuel died, when Samuel died, I cursed God. Hmm. I actually noticed that. Yeah. Did I damn everybody around me as well as myself? No. You are not damned, son. I won't allow that. <laughs> You're not damned. Thanks, Dad. Well. All right, then. Just packing up and leaving. What's next? Well, some unfinished business, it would no, seem. Samuel, this is a gentleman's gun. It's a lot smaller. But it's just as powerful. Dang. That's what you want when you grow up, isn't it? A gun. Samuel! Samuel, come here! Not long now. Hey, get him in the house. Oh, oh my God. He's a fine boy. I don't thank you to never speak to him again. You know, we're not here to arrest you. Oh. That's a big dude. Oh. You take me to the woods. I don't want my boy to see. I don't want my boy to see. Let's get on. He's got the you. gun. He does. Colonel Ludlow, sir. Yeah, what's going on here? <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah! This, is your, this is your opportunity. Yeah, here it is. Do it now. Here we go. He's got it. Yeah, the way he was walking, I could tell he's got this gun. They set it up earlier when he was messing with it. You're right. He's got come it tied on, to his on, hand. Come on, come on, come on. Uh, one more time. Take out the other guy. Come on, you got... There we go. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, fuck. Who this? Where'd Who that? Who that? Did Alfred come back? Alfred wow. came back. Alfred did the right thing. Redemption. Atta boy. Your dad can look at you again. So that that's what the misdirect was about when he looked out the window and we mm -hmm. thought he was looking at them. Mm -hmm. He had it in his sights too. Yep. Ah. Hug. Or a handshake. What's it going to be? There it is. There's the hug. Aww. All right. Now we just disappear these men into the backwoods and uh, call it a night. The genius figure out they're going to come after you for this. Mm. Watch over my children. Watch over Samuel. It's a big ask. Yeah. You know. It's the least he could do, though. Yeah, honestly. I mean, he's part of engineering all this. With the alcohol ban and all. All the scalps. Oh, he's just doing a thing. Okay, I thought mm -hmm. he was taking their scalps. How much I wanted to take scalps was not my kill. Hmm. The three remaining. That night. <laughs> he buried the body and dumped the car in a deep pool in the upper misery. Smart. I thought Tristan would never live to be an old man. I was wrong about that. It was those who loved him most who died young. He was a rock they broke themselves against. Mm. However much he tried, 
tried to protect them. Pet Decker, all. He had his honor and a long life, and he saw his children grow, raise their own families. Wow. Decker. Isabel Loveland. Died in 1963. 1963? He was last seen up in the North Country, where the hunting was still good. His grave is unmarked, but it does not matter. He had always lived in the borderland anyway, somewhere between this world and the other. (laughs) The bear! Yeah. Oh, oh, oh my god. Oh, what a way. Oh. Oh my god. It was a good death. No. Oh, what a warrior wants. What a warrior wants. <sighs> Dang. What a movie. That was a whole experience, Jesus wow. Christ. Wow. <laughs> we went through a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Michael didn't even know what this movie was until today. <laughs> no, I had no idea this movie existed. Yeah. Um, wow. Damn. I liked that a lot more than I was expecting to. I didn't know what to, I didn't know how much I was going to, I liked it a lot. Yeah, um, I really, like, just based off of the, you know, splash cover alone on Amazon when we pulled it up, I was like, oh, this is going to be like, maybe not notebook-esque, but like more notebook romance, yeah, cowboy vibes, yeah. rather yeah. than like the saga that we just experienced. Yeah. It's no wonder I don't remember this movie from when I was a kid because this is boring to kids. Oh, know? yeah, for like, sure. It's just like as a grown up, you can, well, for me anyway, because you grew up in these sorts of environments. Yes. But like for me, like I didn't learn how to appreciate the beauty that is nature until mm-hmm. I got older. And so seeing all this, I'm just like, whoa, like this is beautifully shot. I could only imagine how like wonderful it would have been like to go to set each day. And it's just yeah. be- beautiful. Oh my God. Yeah. If that was my day to day, like going to work for yeah. however long you got to film that film. Oh, I wish my, my, my big dream is to one day be able to film something in Alaska. So mm-hmm. I just get to like, you know, spend however many weeks or months. So or I was on point work. when I was drunkenly shouting at you at my birthday party then. Yeah, yeah no, no, like, fully, fully, a thousand yeah. percent. <laughs> I was like, Michael, you need, to, you need to go make a movie that takes place in Alaska. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was well acted as well. The relationship stuff, it's like, it kind of, it kind of hurt me a little bit because I didn't like it. But it was realistic, I guess. Right. You know, it's mm-hmm. just like, it's just so wildly selfish to me that, but people are making their choices knowing w- what's happening. Right. You know, in that mental atmosphere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, she, uh, Alfred married Susan, Susanna. Yeah. Full well knowing she was still hung up on, you know, his brother. It's like, if he comes back. <sighs> It's gonna. It's, it's it's gonna be. I mean, I guess in one of those situations, if you're Alfred, you marry her, hoping that your love will be enough to temper those feelings he's, and like those naive. feelings to go away. Yeah, I mean, a hundred percent naive, but that's that's who Alfred was. That's yeah. who Alfred is as a character. I mean, you can kind of get that vibe from the moment she steps off the train, mm-hmm. and he just is absolutely like gobsmacked by Smitten. her. Yeah, and it's like. Okay, you're going to be the little puppy, like, constantly tailing after her, just desperate for her attention. Mm -hmm. Like, he wants so badly to be loved by her that he's willing to kid himself, I guess, that she, those intense feelings she has for Tristan would go away over time. I think that, I think the hardest part about watching movies like this is, is seeing yourself in the flawed characters. <laughs> it's like, oh God, it's too familiar. I don't like that at all. Put it away. <laughs> I thought movies were escapism. What are we doing here? <laughs> why, are, why are we dredging up my deeply held uh, insecurities? Dang it. Yeah. Uh, and you know, what's fascinating is you could kind of see the writing on the wall from the word go yeah. with certain things, but despite what you could see because of the foreshadowing of the story, it still was painful to go through, Mm -hmm. which to me says a lot about good filmmaking, writing, and acting, that all of it came together, the Holy Trinity. (laughs) All of it came together exceptionally well in certain moments. Like, what happened with the brother was like, we we all saw that coming, but it still was just like so gut-wrenching because of the performance, you know? Yeah, definitely. And we sort of 
being from the future. We sort of, you know, in, with regards to the characters, like we sort of have a sense as to like, oh, that's that's not going to play out very well at all. Like, yeah. we know exactly what that's going to be like. But it was even worse than I thought with the gas. I didn't know it was going to blind him. Stuff's gnarly. Uh, what would happen with Samuel. Uh, but anyway, there's a sense of, it might have something to do with the fact that it's film and it's an older movie. You know, like sometimes when I watch old westerns, yeah. it feels like I literally am watching something from that The era. Wild West? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like it was literally like they brought a camera back in time. I forget that that was shot in the 70s or the 60s and they, they were on sets and, you know, they drove cars, you know, and had houses, regular right? houses. Yeah. And so, yeah, like th this film being so far removed from us now, it's like it really feels like I was watching something from way back in the day. They you know? do a really good job of like, uh, again, it's just the entire movie basically takes place in the wilds of Montana. So like you mm -hmm. get an open area enough. It's just you can make it whatever you want. Sure. And like it's really easy to be transported back to a time when most of America, or at least most of like central US looked like that. So, yeah, yeah. You know, you think about, I, I, one of the like final places that's sort of untouched wilderness is my home state of Alaska. And so like, I have a, a reasonable amount of experience with like open tracks of like nobody being there. Mm. But it, it's it's kind of interesting to watch this and be taken back to that era where it's like they had to provide all of their own food, really. I mean, like they've got that little farm on there and they probably have their own cattle that they slaughter as well as the cattle that they sell. It's like it's such a being transported back into that lifestyle of like you have to be so incredibly self-sufficient yeah. compared to like life today where everything's so interconnected. And like, I don't even know if I'd have the remotest idea how to build a homestead out mm. there that would last generations. Generations. I can survive. Yeah. I can make it, but I'll have to like my goal will be finding civilization again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, it's kind of like a lost art, and so watching it in this film yeah. feels like you get to be kind of part of that again. You get to experience like that wild west open country, yeah. build it from the ground up sort of lifestyle. You mentioned something very interesting that I didn't really think about, which is like where the film starts and what we kind of think of in re with regards to that era. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, uh, it's like it's this very kind of old development of America. And it's like when you think about the year, it didn't seem it doesn't seem like that when you reflect on it, watching documentaries and photographs and stuff mm -hmm. like that necessarily. Mm -hmm. The thought that had occurred to me when you mentioned that, this is very, kind of off topic, but there's a Vsauce video that kind of talks about how we reflect on history and like weird stuff. And I think if I recall correctly, he mentions that Anne Frank and Martin Luther King Jr. are the same age. Yes, they are. And it's just weird because you think of Anne Frank as a child and Martin Luther King Jr. as a grown up, And like, that's our memory of them, right? And so when you see stuff like this that kind of contrasts very harshly with what you think of when yeah. you think of that era, it's like when I think of 1910, I'm thinking of World War One and airplanes mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. like that and like stuff that maybe isn't modern but is more modern than that. And like skyscrapers being built in New York. You know, you sure. get those like pictures of the guys sitting on the I-beams way yeah. high above the city and things like that. I, I fully agree. And so the, the cognitive dissonance but also the like kind of reminder that it gives yeah. of having a Western that is set during the World War One era and post. Yeah. It really is kind of like rattles you, but is also a nice reminder that like time overlaps, mm -hmm. eras overlap. Yeah. Which I think was an interesting, you know, sort of nod to actual history and yeah. like reminder. This is a film of its time. Uh, I really like the movie a lot. Mm -hmm. I did notice this is like me projecting my modern lens onto the movie. And I recognize that before I say, you know, what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that Karina Lombard, who played Isabel, hardly had any lines. And that did bother me because I'm like, OK, we're watching her fall, you know, them fall in love. But I'm like, I'm not I don't really know her. She's, right. She's just a function of his story. And whereas by contrast, you know, we, we had so much time with Susanna, played by Julia o o Orman, who's, a, you know, I, I'll bitch, she's the star. But, you know, it's like it would have been cool to like get to know her more to really feel her death, because like while it shocked me, like, you know, when it, ha it was very surprising when it happened, it would have hurt me a lot more if I knew her more. Yeah. You know? It did feel a little bit like she got fridged at the end just so we had a reason to create conflict again. Yes, exactly. Like, she was entirely brought in to be ripped away from him. Yes. So that way we could have, again, that moment with Susanna and in jail, and then, you know, the bear comes back and he has to deal with the other bootleggers. I agree. I would have yeah. liked to see more from her, and I guess, technically speaking, they had her character a little more established as the 13 year old yes so like technically 
her character was in there mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I, yeah, I would have liked to see more from Isabel too. I understand the burden on the movie when she's brought back into the story. It's like there's a phrase in writing called kill your babies, yes. right? Because mm-hmm. like you have all these this good stuff and you have to decide what to keep. And it's difficult because there's, everything's good. Mm-hmm. And, and so as a writer, you sort of have to kill your babies because it feels like that, right? Because you're killing all this golden stuff that people will never see um, because you're taking it out of the story. And when you get to that part of the movie, there's so much that we've covered already, and it might feel exhausting to then spend time developing that relationship. Yes. And so we sort of have to fast track it through montage. And I'm like, okay, I understand. It's like, so there's, it's sort of like, uh, I have two minds about it. Like on the one hand, I get it, and it was well done. On the other, my, on the other, on the other side, I'm like, yeah, but it would have been cool to know her more. So that, that would yeah. have been more impactful. That's all. I agree. Uh, yeah. I agree. It's, it's like you said, we got to take what we can get. And ultimately, like the overall film, I don't feel was hurt by her loss or like her fridging. I like mm. I think it was still a really masterfully done movie and it allowed for some really excellent emotional beats on Tristan's part as well as Susanna's part. I think uh, my favorite scene of Susanna is when she's talking to him in the jail cell. Okay, I want to hear this. She's yeah. having she's having this breakdown. Like yeah. I I get it. Like it sounds unreasonable. Like mm-hmm. she's objectively being unreasonable because she's coming back and crying over like, "Oh man, we could have been together" or mm-hmm. things like that. But I just think it's such a beautiful character moment that like shows that no matter how long it has been and no matter how like potentially happy with Alfred she is, she's never been able to get over that relationship with Tristan. Mm-hmm. And to a certain extent, neither has Tristan. Yeah, that's true. And it shows that they still have this deep like love and passion for each other, but the understanding finally sets in that they can never be together. Mm-hmm. Well, Brad Pitt rejected her in that moment as well. He did. Yeah, yeah he fully did. Yeah, like he could have he could have kissed her mm-hmm. and he's like no I, I think that he, whatever you just explained it turned off for him in that like before that you know because I, I'll be, he just lost his wife yeah, so yeah I mean agree. It's, it's, I fully agree you know, from an acting perspective yeah I like it a lot mm-hmm. um, I like what she was going through when the characters feel so real I sort of forget that I'm watching acting <laughs> you know mm-hmm, yeah and and so with her there were moments where I'm like I, I kind of hate her and I kind of want her to die you know but I, at, right. the, at the same time I understand mm-hmm. where she's coming from the limitations of you know what it is to be a woman in that era yeah. there's a lot going on it's very complicated and so you know I understand her perspective and I you know it, it's it feels so real I think it just like frustrates me that she got married while she's still in love and then she wishes that his kid died and like oh, or it's not his kid no, she's his, saying she she was saying that sometimes she wished that his wife was dead so that way she I could, heard that part she could be with him and then um Samuel she meant his brother Samuel oh okay she was saying that like maybe a part of her had also when they met had hoped that Samuel would die in a war that's what she was saying that's, that's what she was saying yeah, yeah it's a little confusing because the kid is named Samuel yes as well so like I totally understand the confusion but she was saying that Samuel who was her first betrothed yeah she part of her wished that he would die so that they could be together was you, the implication. Okay. Are you sure? Yes, I'm absolutely sure. Okay, okay, that, okay. that is what she was saying. Okay. Because she said it in the past tense. Like, oh, gotcha. She was oh, basically yeah, yeah, saying that she consciously wished that Isabel II Still, would die. No matter which way you slice yeah, this exactly. pie, it's it's disgusting. It's a little messed <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah. It's a little messed <laughs> like, up. Like, it, it's just like, oh, but it, at the same time, it's very honest, mm-hmm. and I get it. Mm-hmm. Like, I understand that feeling. Am I being very loud? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. I, I was just yeah. adjusting for my ears. No, you continue, continue. Yeah, no, I, I I, get where she's coming from, and it's a very human thing that she was revealing in that moment. Um, and so, from a writing standpoint, it's actually very strong, and the performance standpoint is very strong. It's so strong that it made me upset. That you're angry at it. <laughs> I'm angry yeah. at this character who's not real. <laughs> it's like, it's just zeros and ones at this point, but it's making me, it's bothering me on a visceral level. Right. Uh, you know? I, I agree. It's like, you know that the writers and just the film overall is doing a really, really good job if you are just so deeply in yeah. to a character's story that you're just screaming at them when they make poor decisions yeah. or they do stupid things. Yeah, actually, you hit on something very important there. Uh, Another like little writing rule that I've I've read is that some you know you want to fall in love with your characters and you want them to be competent but you also want to like you you want to have things where your characters do things that the audience doesn't necessarily want your character to yeah, do. Yeah. You know, make mistakes. 
because then the audience gets upset. They're like, no, what do I do? No, not that door. You know, stuff like that. And so, it was, yeah, it was well executed. So Definitely. No, the, the writing was phenomenal, and all the portrayals of the characters, I think, lends itself. Because you can have, like, excellent writing and then flat portrayals, and that, that can really take it away. So, like you said, the holy trinity of, of filmmaking, acting, and writing really came together on this one. Anthony Hopkins, by the way. Oh, my God. Just, like, yeah. chewing up the scene. Um, the, the, my favorite with him was when his son came back to get his blessings. Yes. Was like, I was just thinking of that scene. Yeah. That yeah. was very, very good. There was something about the way he's just handling it so deftly, like, just... Not, he's not doing a lot. He's not, mm -mm. he's not coming at them loud and brash and stomping around this... Like, it's all just... While he's on the fireplace like this, mm -hmm. just like wrecking this, like <laughs> wrecking all of them with his with his knowledge and his, you know, because he's got his experience and he's drawing upon it. And like, I don't it's amazing just to watch that. I'm like, dang. Yeah, dude, killed he was it. incredible. Yeah. And I just the almost painful part of his character for me is how long he survived and outlived his sons, yeah. his family, yeah. the, like the wives that were brought in. Like he outlived so many people in his family circle. And that's so painful. Yeah. Like the level of grief that the Colonel had to go through mm -hmm. throughout this film. And like also watch his sons go through yeah. too. Like that's, that you, that's not something you ever want for your children, I say, is all my experience with a, being a dad. But, like, yeah, you know, it's, you, you never want to outlive your sons. You never want to outlive those in your family younger than you. Yeah, it's rough. I, a, a huge, huge props to the uh, hair and makeup department. <laughs> oh, yeah, for the... <laughs> Brad Pitt's like perfect shining hair. They the the corporate sponsorship must have been L'Oreal, and they're like, "There's no way we're getting a L'Oreal bottle on screen, so we just got to make Brad Pitt look like a L'Oreal model." Yeah, I mean, and he to his credit, he was doing a fantastic job as well. Yeah, because easily he could just be a pretty boy, but he watching his whole filmography, you know, it's like he does try to challenge himself with he's always doing character roles. Yep. And so the first time I realized I liked him was Snatch. And so if you haven't seen Snatch, like, well, at some point we'll have you watch it. Um, it's a, it's, it's like he's, he's, his role is not the main role, but he has such a fun and interesting role. And so after that, you see, you know, him always trying to do like, then he did, um, at some point he did a uh, uh, one where he ages backwards. The oh, yeah, yeah, the curious. Uh, yeah. Yes, that one. I know what you're talking about. Benjamin Button. Benjamin Button, that's yeah. it. Awesome. Yeah. You guys, thanks so much for hanging. Hopefully you enjoyed that, that reaction and, and discussion. Uh, I'm Jabby Coy. This is Michael Boos. Peace out.